Welcome to our 2020 exhibition of ceramics by Jean-Nicolas Gérard. You wouldn't believe it, but this is actually only our third exhibition of Jean-Nicolas Potts. And the last was in 2015, five years ago. It doesn't feel like that though. Uh, every summer since that last show, we have been driving over with a van, picking up wonderful pots by Jean-Nicolas from Valençol in south of France, and bringing them back here to the gallery where no sooner than they arrived, they left for new homes. So it's been wonderful to have this build-up of work, um, this, this opportunity to, to show his work in full, in the wonderful breadth that you'll see in this show. And also, especially, as you can see behind me, to be able to give some of these largest of John Nicola's pots the space, uh, the air that they deserve. There's a, a real powerful feel to these square dishes behind me. Wonderful gravitas of seeing them up there on the wall with these lights on them. And also some of these large vases too. Though these are the largest pots in, uh, in John Nicola's work, in John Nicola's output, everything that he makes has a domestic scale to it. You can see the impress of his fingers and his thumbs and his hands everywhere in the work, even in these largest vases, in the wonderful sort of dimpled edges of these square dishes. Everything that he makes is for uh, human interaction. You can see that in the wonderful vases here beside me. Uh, you might see in his garden littered about among the plants and the flowers. Uh, the, the vegetables that he grows there. You can also see, uh, particularly on these square dishes behind me, uh, in the wonderful yellows, these beautiful stripes of, of cobalt and iron, in the rich, fantastic dark blacks, and also in some of the unglazed raw clay, this beautiful russet, rusty red colour of the earth, the earthenware clay. You can see in this palette the natural reflections, the mirroring of the world around Jean Nicolas in Provençal, France. Some of the motifs on these large dishes, uh, the sort of the, the spots and the scratched lines, uh, mimic some of those, uh, the vines, the lavender fields, uh, the tilled soil across the landscape around him. Having said that, though you can see the reflection of landscape, uh, of the world around him in John Nicolas Potts, there's a huge breadth of influences that go into his work. As a young man, he was brought to pottery, uh, discovered pottery through his teacher, Jean Biagini, uh, who had worked in uh, Japan as well as the US. And um, the influence of Japanese ceramics has been fundamental to Jean Nicolas Potts throughout his life. He's also uh, well versed in Korean ceramics. Lee Kang Hyo, another gallery potter, is a good friend. And recently, he's been looking at Chinese ink painting. But I think especially when you look at some of these large pots which open this show in this spectacular uh, display along this back wall, they make me think of the wonderful uh, 20th century artists that Jean Nicola likes especially. People like Matisse, his favourite artist, uh, the wonderful loose scraffito lines in, in Jean Nicola's work you can see reflected in some of uh, Matisse's draftsmanship. If you've ever seen the footage that we shot a couple of years ago of Jean Nicolas working on some of these large vases, scratching through those surfaces of, of slip, applying his finger spots, they remind me especially of those photographs of Picasso drawing in the air with a torch recorded on camera. There's a wonderful conviction, a freedom and a spontaneity to the way that he works with clay, to the way that he treats clay and to the way that he embraces uh, uh, the the accidents, uh, the unpredictable nature of clay. I think that's why he's known, particularly in the community of potters, as the potter's potter. It's fellow potters who appreciate his work, who use his pots every day, and who, having undergone years themselves of technical training, of prowess, of honing their experience and their knowledge, appreciate how difficult it is to leave that world behind and to embrace and express in clay with the kind of almost childlike freedom that Jean Nicola has. You can see that in some of these uh, smaller square dishes, just the simple scratched lines through the surface of the slip, these beautiful spiral shapes, the wonderful glossy, deep, rich colour in this slipware. This is 
simple, straight to the heart pottery, which you can't help but start smiling at and feeling joy for as you see this wonderful display around you. I grew up with jean nicolas pots, and I remember as a child watching every morning my stepfather going to the cupboard and bringing out a jean nicolas beaker, a jean nicolas bowl, a plate, not entirely unlike the beakers and the bowls and the plates that you'll see in this exhibition. Every day it might be a different character that's brought out, a different beaker, a different bowl, a different plate, but every day, unmistakably, it was Jean Nicolas. There is something about Jean Nicolas' domestic pots, his tableware, the work that he has a real affinity for and which he uh, particularly enjoys making. He feels a kind of zen when he's, when he's throwing uh, and forming uh, it from his uh, clay slabs. Something of the infectious joy that he has for clay gets into those pots. Something about the way that he handles clay, the way that the fingers are, are squeezed into it, gives everything that kind of intimate connection. And it means that they are eminently usable and enjoyable on the table and in the kitchen. In this show, you'll see a huge breadth, a range of work uh, of the kind that Jean Nicolas makes. Particularly enjoyable uh, is his, his tableware. You can see some of that here in these, uh, these wonderful vases, bottles, uh, bowls, beakers, teapots and jugs. Among these many forms, and you can see the, the rich colours, the variety of colours in his slipware palette. I particularly enjoy the pots that have that uh, sense of whimsy about them. Things like this beautiful bowl with these fantastic eccentric ear lug handles or these wonderful pictures, so characteristic of Jean-Nicolas work, with these, uh, these sort of large, generous, open mouths. They almost look to me like birds of paradise, with these sort of proud beaks uh, sticking up in front of them. Jean-Nicolas is a man who engages deeply with the world through his hands. And it's not just pottery, but gardening, cooking, the kind of bricolage, putting together of things that you'll see in his studio. The house that he's built himself that's filled with his own tiles, the furniture, the appliances throughout the house that have ceramic affixings that he's added ramshackle to those bits in his house. That kind of deep uh, and, and, uh, and uh, personal engagement with the world through his hands, you can see brought out in the pottery too, in the way that some of these forms are put together. Among his recent particular favourites, uh, I hear, are these bottles, and you'll see a number of those throughout this exhibition, uh, small and tall. These show that kind of bricolage, that crafting uh, off perfectly. The body and the neck are thrown separately and then joined, I think, using a coil around here at the neck and at the base. It gives them a, a wonderful jaunty feel, the different angles that he chooses to accentuate and, and drop from bottle to bottle, uh, the sort of the steep necks, the sloping uh, uh, shoulders around some of these bottles, that kind of putting together bits of clay, feeling out a, a solution, uh, and these wonderful, very individual results that come out of it. Some of these bottles that you'll see throughout the show, both in this traditional slipware palette and also in the new whiteware glaze are, are some of my very favourites in this show. You can see some of it down here on this plinth here. These wonderful small platters enlivened with spots of, of colour enamel and also over here on these shelves back here. This whiteware has been a number of years in the making, in the preparation. Back in, I think, 2006, Jean-Nicolas uh, was uh, invited to, to attend uh, the Archie Bray Foundation in Montana. And for two months, uh, he spent time in, in the US and decided to give himself a new project. And this, this white glaze was his new project to work on. He spent some time working there with potters there who had experience with working with, um, with the, uh, glazes like this. I think it's a tin oxide that gives this wonderful white colour and then took that home and over the last 10 years has been slowly getting it to a point where he's happy to give it a, a kind of an inauguration in this exhibition. The white glaze is 
quite different to the, the palette of the slipwear that he's used to, that sort of complementary palette of the blues, the greens, the yellows and browns of traditional French slipwear. This white is quite stark, it's quite fresh and vibrant, and that poses a number of difficulties and challenges to, to Jean Nicolet. He says it's changed the way uh, he's uh, decorated in some instances. What was a, a real breakthrough for him uh, in getting it to work was layering it with this black slip underneath. If I take a lovely bowl like this one, you can see this white glaze in places where it's thinner has this kind of milky opalescence to it, a kind of almost a transparency, and you can start to see this black slip coming through this white glaze. And in this graffito marks, where it's, it's been marked through the white glaze on the top, you get that wonderful stark black, deep dark colour coming through. Gives them a real kind of intensity, a, co a quite different sort of starkness that the other slipwear doesn't have. It's interesting to see this, this completely different feel from just a, a simple change of, of colour in these wonderful white pots. With the white glaze came uh, these beautiful coloured enamels. He's had to work sparingly with these to sort of get the most out of their, their effects. And they're really beautifully enlivened on these, on these white surfaces. Uh, the wonderful pops of blue and red and some of these deep purples and yellows. It's a completely different, uh, fresh feel to it. Uh, and it's really exciting to be able to, to see that come to fruition here today. You might notice that this show has a, almost a fuller feel than some of the, uh, the last ceramics exhibitions we've here. There are more pots out on display, out on the walls, out on the shelves. That's because if you've seen the list of pots in this exhibition, there are a monster 478 currently on the list. And that's not counting the hundred or more pots that are yet to arrive in a couple of days' time, uh, fresh from Valençol just a couple of weeks ago, uh, picked up uh, and brought back to the gallery. This is a, a, a huge undertaking uh, that jean Nicolas has been uh, working towards, uh, um, some three or five years of accumulation of pots. And really, we get to see the full breadth of how jean Nicolas works uh, in this show. In particular, I'd like to bring you over here and to show you some of the, the, uh, the range of decorative techniques that jean Nicolas likes to engage in his pots. There's a wonderful use of uh, scraffito in John Nicola's work. That's scratching through the surface of the slip or sometimes right through to re reveal the raw clay underneath. And depending on the, the thickness of the line, uh, the, the thickness of the tool, you can get a huge variety of marks. John Nicola's have a wonderful, spontaneous, uh, expressive uh, feel to them. He's talked about how he feels he's not so much decorating his pots as animating them, as accentuating the forms, uh, the, the volumes of the pots that he's thrown or that he's made on, on slabs like these uh, wonderful platters here. And that the marks that he's scratching through, the finger spots that he's adding to these pots, these are uh, movements to enliven, to, to bring to life the surface of the pot. That's the sort of the core duality in Terre Vernisse, in slipwear. It's this wonderful, rich clay, this earthenware clay that you have to work with, and uh, the, the vernis, the, the, the veneer of slip, the surface. Marrying those two together is not an easy task. Jean Nicolas makes it look easy in these wonderful pots. You'll notice that in the edges of some of these dishes, for example, these wonderful, almost sort of crimped, rough and ready edges, there's a wonderful kind of relaxed quality to Jean Nicolas' work, a sort of an ease about them. Nothing looks pushed, nothing looks uh, pretentious. These are, are, are sort of um, easy, free-flowing parts. That feeling of ease is not easy to achieve, though. Jean Nicolas has talked about the spontaneity in his mark making and his decoration. And key to that is not so much uh, simply letting yourself go on the pot as um, knowing quite clearly beforehand what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to achieve. Having that conviction beforehand is uh, vital to that kind of wonderful expressive uh, and, and quick decoration that we saw Jean Nicolas making on some of those, those large vases earlier. If you come over here and have a look at some of these square dishes on the, on the wall, you can see the variety of those marks. 
like the artists that Jean-Nicolas uh, so loves, he has a, a really profound sense of using up the space of his pots, of, of accentuating and uh, emphasising uh, the forms that he's thrown or the forms that he's made in some of these slab dishes. Some of the scratched marks, uh, the use of finger spots or of different uh, slips, this wonderful rich blue colour that we've got across here, or the audacity of this single thumbprint here. To be able to make straightforward, uh, apparently straightforward and simple marks like this, simple uh, uh, applications of colour, requires a real confidence that you know what you're doing with the space of that pot. Slipware is ultimately about marrying the surface uh, of, of the pot, the, the slip itself, with the form underneath. That's something that Jean-Nicolas ha has mastered, I think, in, in this wonderful uh, uh, body of work. You can see it uh, especially in some of these white pots where that uh, combination of form and surface is even more starkly pronounced in these bright and fresh colours. With that freshness and that spontaneity and that confidence, there's also a wonderful wit to Jean-Nicolas' work. Some of my favourite pots are his, his whimsical dishes and his whimsical lidded jars, like these wonderful pair down here. Humour of the kind that you'll find in pots like this, in some of the wonderful whimsical dishes with uh, little balls of clay and abstract shapes around their rims. This is the kind of thing that's not necessarily prevalent in studio ceramics. It's something, however, that taps into Jean-Nicolas' uh, desire that pottery be a kind of a human medium one that has a connection with the people that use it, one in which you can feel that what is in front of you, what you're using, what you have on your shelves, on your walls, are things that have been made by human hands. That really ties into the decorative schemes of Jean-Nicolas Potts as well. The fact that everything's been uh, faced with, with fingers and thumbs, that uh, the little nooks that have been impressed into the sides of, of, uh, of pots, um, the finger marks that you can see around the base or around the neck where bits of clay have been uh, adjoined, uh, uh, joined to each other. Keeping these marks, uh, these um, what would be uh, called imperfections by some potters, uh, is critical to Jean-Nicolas pottery. It's the evidence that this has all been made by a human being and that what they are about is a, a kind of human connection, a sharing, uh, a sensitivity and a sensibility um, that is uh, profoundly intimate. Jean-Nicolas has spoken about how when he decorates pots, it's the pots that tell him what to do and not the other way around. That spontaneity and some of these human marks that you'll see in the beakers, uh, in teapots and bowls, those impresses of fingers and thumbs, are not just part of his sort of philosophy of making, they're also eminently functional. They mean that because they've been formed by a hand, they tend to fit into a human hand. Working in this kind of way, however, also allows Jean Nicolas to sort of avoid being formulaic without deciding on rules in advance of making, letting the pots tell him what they need, what he, they want him to do. Every pot, despite coming from the same palette, from the same materials, from the same maker, has its individual feel. No one beaker by Jean Nicolas is like another, and that's the same for many of his pots. One of the ways of working that he's recently embraced uh, has been a change in the way that he makes things like some of these uh, wonderful, uh, large, uh, rather sort of almost crude vases and these bottles. Previously, these were thrown all in one. Recently, Jean-Nicolas has taken to throwing the body of the vase and then adding the collar, uh, this sort of neck uh, area here in coils separately. Now that might seem like quite a, a simple, straightforward change, but what it does is it, uh, it makes quite a, a profound difference in the way that the pot is formed. He's talked about how when you throw from start to finish, there's a kind of rhythm, a kind of cadence to what you're doing. And the sort of the flow of moving from start to finish, knowing what sort of form you're aiming for, tends to draw you into a certain groove. You start working in a certain way, looking for the same lines. 
he said that recently, and this is, these are only the sort of the, the second or third, uh, maybe third or fourth firings of vases that he's been making in this way. Working in this new way of uh, splitting these pots into parts, of using coiling and throwing separately, has meant that that rhythm of making, that cadence of making, has been interrupted. It's forced him to look at things afresh and to accept uh, the sort of the slightly strange peculiarity of working in this new way of, of not paying too much attention to how specifically uh, the neck is going to uh, uh, join with the pot. And as a result, you get these vases with a wonderful kind of idiosyncratic feel. They've got a, a beautiful lopsidedness to them, uh, which is characteristic of all of John Dickens' pottery. Throwing off those tendencies that you develop uh, when sort of throwing uh, it completely from start to finish, throwing off those usual habits, getting out of his comfort zone, has prompted some new ways of thinking about pots, some new ways of working with pots. But it also brings us back to what is at the core of jean Nicolas's philosophy of making, uh, that embrace of imperfection, of peculiarity, of the accidents that weren't anticipated, that weren't expected when making, but which take you into a completely new uh, direction. jean Nicolas's work is a celebration of the unexpected in life. Pottery is a naturally unpredictable medium, a naturally unpredictable craft. It's raw, natural materials, it's clays, it's glazes. Uh, the nature of the kiln means that everything in pottery is unpredictable. You don't quite know that what you're going to get at the end of it is what you had thought of at the start. That's really uh, been uh, shown out in the pots in this exhibition, these wonderful uh, individual expressive pots. But it's also um, a, a wonderful way of looking at life, of being able to uh, accept the, the strangeness and the unexpected in life. I think that's partly why jean Nicolas pots give us such joy, why there is so much to see, so much to enjoy in a single pot, revisited day after day after day. And it's why I remember my stepfather every morning taking out jean Nicolas pots to eat his breakfast. Over the coming weeks, more and more of the pots that you see here will be appearing on our, online on our website. We will be uh, no doubt looking at some more in depth, looking at maybe some particular forms, some particular uh, shapes, uh, maybe some more of that beautiful whiteware in focus. For now, I hope this has been uh, a, a, an enjoyable introduction to, to jean Nicolas' work. For those unversed in the world of ceramics, it is, it is not perhaps what you would expect from the world of, of studio ceramics, from the world of studio pottery. But it is pottery that is utterly life-affirming. It is why, as I said at the start, uh, Jean Nicola is known as the potter's potter, and it's why he remains one of our very favourite potters here at the gallery. I hope you'll join me again soon to look at some more of this beautiful work. For now, uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon.